now we come to the area of greatest importance. Probably greatest, and yet the part least regarded, even by traditional Catholics, by religious sisters, and most tragically, even by priests. So many prepare well for Holy Mass. So many fast. So many people have such great attention during the sacred liturgy. Many receive Holy Communion with great devotion, with great love. But then, but then they pay such little attention to our Lord, even while he is physically inside of them. Physically. Once you've received our Lord upon your tongue, you've returned to your place, you are kneeling down, you swallow our Lord as soon as you are able to, and then our Lord remains physically present inside of you, radiating graces into your soul. He does this for as long as the physical integrity of the Blessed Sacrament remains with inside of you. For about 15 minutes, at least 15 minutes, properly speaking, these 15 minutes are not the time of thanksgiving. No, these 15 minutes are the time simply of communion, of Holy Communion. Holy Communion is not really a noun referring to the Blessed Sacrament, but it's a state, a state that comes about through receiving the Blessed Sacrament. And that state, that physical reality lasts for 15 minutes. More accurately, the thanksgiving only begins after these 15 minutes have completed. But for the saints, for the saints, these two periods merged into one. The fire, the physical Blessed Sacrament enkindled in their soul, they were able to maintain through their devotion, their interior delight of the Blessed Sacrament. And so in some way, it's almost like they, they endeavoured to extend the Holy Communion by such a fierce and fiery and ardent Thanksgiving period. Or maybe we could say that the fire of the Blessed Sacrament inside of them so warmed their soul that the soul glowed continually even long after the 15 minutes of physical fire remained inside of them. So for the saints, the saints were absorbed in prayer after Holy Communion for sustained periods of time. And not just the saints. This is the universal impulse that all devout Catholics receive, to have a sustained period of prayer after the Blessed Sacrament has been received. What has happened to us? What has happened where that time of thanksgiving has been so removed from the life of our churches? Five minutes after Holy Mass and the church is empty. Father is shaking hands at the door. The ushers are tidying the books. The faithful are heading to their cars or taking a cup of tea in the parish centre. What has happened? Why has this thanksgiving disappeared? Why do people no longer stay behind out of love of our Lord, whom they've received even before the 15 minutes of physical presence has come to an end? People have left. This is in every church. This is in SSPX. This is in Nova Sordo. This is in convents. This is everywhere. How tragic that this period that was so desired and so prized among the saints and the devout ones of former ages, that this period has been so neglected in our day. What evil, what blasphemy, what ingratitude. Dominus est, it is the Lord. O Lord, I repent of all the years when I did not know the importance of the time of thanksgiving, and I resolve from now on to follow the advice of the saints, of Saint Alphonsus, who asks me, who commands me to make a 30 minute thanksgiving after the moment of Holy Communion. 30 minutes interior recollection from the moment of reception of the Blessed Sacrament. This is my resolution. This is what I must do following the inspiration the saints have received. I will remain focused on your real and physical presence inside of me. How? Will I spend this time? 
as the saints have taught, I will adore you, I will thank you, I will petition you. Each for ten minutes. Adoration. I will make acts of faith. You are truly inside of me. In this ten minutes, I will imagine you as a baby in my arms. Or I will imagine you as you were on Calvary, kneeling before you as Magdalene was. I will imagine you as you were in Galilee, teaching the apostles, or as St. John lying on your breast at the Last Supper. I will repeat acts of faith, and those acts of faith will flow into acts of adoration, adoring you truly present inside of me. If I grow cold in this adoration, I will invite the Blessed Mother to adore him inside of me, just as she adored him during those nine months of her physical pregnancy. Indeed, St. Louis-Marie de Montfort teaches that the time of Holy Communion is like an extension of Our Lady's period of pregnancy, for Holy Communion continues the mystery of the Incarnation. O Blessed Mother, O Guardian Angel, I invite you to adore him truly present inside of me. Then, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for my creation, for my redemption, that I was baptized, that I was made a member of the one true church, the Catholic Church. Thanksgiving that the Lord has preserved me in the state of grace even to this moment. Thanksgiving, above all, that he has come to me, an ignorant person and a sinner this day. I would offer thanksgiving for the graces that I have received in my own life since the last Holy Communion. It will be like a resume of the period of my last 24 hours or the last week, thanking him personally for his interventions in my life. Then I will thank him on behalf of the graces given to others, thanking him for those who do not thank him, particularly on behalf of sinners and worldlings who do not even thank the Lord for the common graces that are given to them, graces of health, graces of happiness, graces of success, graces of worldly prosperity. Lord Jesus, my heart will be an echo of our Blessed Mother's Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked on his servant in her lowliness, hence all ages will call me blessed. Indeed, truly blessed am I to have him inside of me, and I will thank him. I will pour out my thanksgiving, asking the Blessed Mother to help me to repeat her Magnificat on my behalf, to thank the Lord for the grace that he has given to his little one this day of Holy Communion. And then... After thanksgiving, petition. Petition. In my preparation for Holy Mass, I have prepared a set of petitions, or one particular petition that I had designed to lay before the Eucharistic Lord this day. Now is my moment. Now is the time that I lay before the King the petition that is dear to my heart and surely is dear to his heart also. He is inviting me. He is interested in my petition. He wants to help me. He wants to help me even more than I want to see this situation resolved. For I am his beloved one. In Holy Communion, I lay before him all that is on my mind. Speaking like the little servant before its master. Like the child before his good father. With great confidence, I lay my needs before him, knowing that he's here in Holy Communion, not for his benefit, but for mine. On days of aridity, on days when I do not feel that the Lord is inside of me, I will remain faithful all the same to this 30 minutes. I will use a little book of vocal prayers in order to fill the time with acts of faith, hope, love, adoration, contrition, petition. I will never neglect these 30 minutes of prayer as the saints taught, as my forefathers in the faith faithfully carried out. O oh Lord, 
This is my resolution to take seriously the thanksgiving, to enjoy the thanksgiving, to delight in the thanksgiving. I will never ever lose this advantageous occasion again. I will be like the one leper, the single leper who even after you told the tender to part, you said to go, but that one returned. He returned and he went before your feet in thanksgiving. Lord, I will be the one who remains in thanksgiving, even if the church is empty, even if the priest is locking up, even if everyone has gone off to some parish function or celebration. Lord, I will not leave you. And if I have to, I will continue that prayer in the car or outside of the church. I will not leave you. I will not ignore you. I would take advantage of Holy Communion. I would not be as Judas, who left soon after he received the Blessed Sacrament, soon after the supper had ended. No, I will be as John the Beloved, reclining upon your breast, speaking intimately with you, learning the secrets of your heart. It is for this reason that you have come in the form of Holy Communion to be with me, and I would take advantage of this time for the entirety that you are inside of me, and I will bear witness to others for the importance of this time, teaching them, pointing them to the writings of the saints and the great theologians of old who insisted on the essential nature of this time of thanksgiving, the non-negotiable time of thanksgiving, of adoration, of thanksgiving, of supplication for the Lord Jesus who is truly inside of me during these moments. How good, how kind you are to me, O Jesus. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.